Hey everyone, in this video, I've got a really quick and simple method that you can use to boost your Muse Meditation Calm scores. This is a totally new method that I've never shared before in my previous videos or in my eBooks because I just learned how to effectively do this last month. I've repeated it a bunch of times and I'm really excited to share it here with you today. Not only will this boost your Muse Meditation Calm scores, it's also going to teach you a lot about how Muse is actually training you to do meditation so that you know how to do it more effectively with less time. For those of you who don't know, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a US Navy trained and board certified psychiatrist specializing in neurotech wearables like the Muse headband for health and wellness practice. The Muse Headband meditation software algorithms were trained on expert level meditators by tracking your brainwaves through the EEG sensors. The device knows if you are getting deeper into a meditative state with mindfulness training. In order to reward your brainwaves to go in the right direction, you'll hear birds during the meditation exercise and other soundscape sounds like wind and rain will also quiet down as you get more peaceful and into the meditative state with mindfulness training. Now these algorithms are quite complex but we know that they are heavily influenced by alpha brainwaves. These are the brainwaves that go between 8 and 13 oscillations per second, otherwise known as hertz. At the beginning of the meditation exercise, the Muse headband goes through a 10 second calibration phase before you enter into your 10 to 15 minute meditation session. Now we know from the scientific literature, the EEG brainwaves in individual people are highly variable throughout the day. So the device needs to get a baseline recording at that meditation time in order for the particular session to be successful. Now, one of the key factors behind the technique that I'm sharing in today's video is that there is a degree of change in alpha brainwaves between the calibration and meditation session that will strongly impact your calm scores. During the calibration phase, it's going to ask you to settle down and not try anything specific. And then during the meditation session, it's going to try and get you to increase your alpha brainwaves. Early on in my Muse training, I found one quick way to sort of cheat the algorithm by calibrating with your eyes open and then doing the meditation session afterwards with your eyes closed. See, when you open your eyes, there's a well-known neuroscience effect where the incoming light actually temporarily suppresses your alpha brainwave levels. This is called alpha blocking. If you were to calibrate with your eyes open, there's going to be a much lower alpha power than usual. And then as soon as you close your eyes during the meditation session, the algorithm thinks that you've got this big natural increase in alpha brainwaves. So it's much easier to get birds in a high calm score at the end of the session. Again, that's because there's going to be a big difference between your alpha with your eyes open during the calibration and eyes closed during the 10 minute meditation session. Now, I don't really like using this technique because it makes the meditation session too easy and it doesn't actually encourage your alpha to increase during the training. It's not effectively training your brain at that point. But if you don't have a strategy for the calibration, you can feel like every session is just all over the map because sometimes your alpha levels are higher or lower depending on what you're going through during the day. So it's really difficult to be consistent and I've seen a lot of people complaining about that on YouTube. For a long time, I've been looking for something more in the middle, some kind of calibration protocol that you can do that will make it more predictable during your meditation sessions, but also not make it too easy. So the question is, what can we do to make things more consistent? And the answer is actually in understanding what happens with the brain when you visualize. So let's get to our method here. A few months ago, a thought occurred to me that I thought was interesting. Now we know that when we imagine things, it actually turns on the visual centers of our brain in the back of our head, much in the way that seeing things actually does. A lot of people in Law of Attraction talk about how if you visualize your goals, it'll make it real to your brain because your brain doesn't distinguish visualization from reality. And I've seen brain scan studies showing the visualization does activate the occipital lobe in the back of your brain. So I thought, what happens when you visualize with your eyes closed? What does that do to the alpha waves? So I decided to run a little experiment. I recorded my brain waves in total darkness with a blindfold, but what I did during the 12 minute session is that I visualized bright lights for a two minute time span to see what it did to my brain waves in the middle of the session. I used a third party app called Mind Monitor, ran the experiment, 
and I was really surprised by the results. You can actually see where the alpha brain waves dipped noticeably during my visualization of bright lights, much like it would have done if I would have just opened my eyes. But what I noticed is that the dip was to a lesser degree in magnitude of change compared to eyes open versus eyes closed. So then I tested it with the Muse headband and I was really pleased with the results. If you calibrate with your eyes closed, but you visualize bright lights, it'll actually make the meditation session afterwards much easier if you cut visualization out of the rest of the exercise. What's really easy for me is I like to visualize I'm at an EDM, electronic dance music show, with a DJ and a bright screen behind them. I go to those concerts sometimes, so it's easy for me to see in my mind's eye. Maybe I'm watching Dead Mouse or something, and you just see the silhouette of the DJ, but behind them is this really bright screen. Sometimes I'll add some movement in there to help my brain lock onto that image. And during that 10 second calibration, if you visualize something like that really effectively, you'll notice that you will have a lot more control over the 10 minute meditation session afterwards. It doesn't make it completely easy, but it makes it a lot more manageable at the same time. And with that method, I've easily increased my meditation scores, averaging around 60% to 90% every time with much more of a degree of control. Now, I know it's still kind of a hack of the system, similar to opening and closing your eyes. We are sort of getting around what the Muse headband wants you to do, but I still think that this knowledge is effective because it actually taught me something really key about what the Muse is trying to teach you in terms of meditation. I think a lot of people either try to visualize something or have visual thoughts enter their mind during the meditation session. And I think what they don't know is that it really is messing with the algorithm. They're really going to get a lot of negative feedback when they do that. And maybe some of you out there haven't really made this distinction yet. I mean, if you close your eyes, you can kind of sit there and just relax and just be in the moment. Or you can actually turn on the visual centers of your brain and try to look at the back of your eyelids. There's a very distinct difference in feeling for me when I try that. So you imagine if your visual centers turn on and you're looking at the back of your eyelids during the meditation session, that's not going to go very well for you. So overall, what Muse is trying to train you to do is to feel things with your mind's eye, not actually see them. Instead, you're sensing things. Like if during the Muse meditation session, you're told to watch your breath, don't actually watch your breath with the visual areas of your brain. Don't try to visualize your breath coming in and out. What you want to do is just feel the air coming in and out. Feel the sensation, be there with your breath, and be mindful and in the present moment instead of actually watching something with your eyes. And if you've seen my ebook, I talk about more advanced energy center practices. And the idea is that you're feeling those centers, you're getting pulled into that feeling of that energy center, and you're not actually visually looking at the bottom of your spine or at your pineal gland. You're not actually visually encountering these things, you're feeling them with your mind's eye. So not only does this visualization calibration technique teach us how to make things a little bit easier on the Muse headband and a little bit more predictable, it actually teaches us a lot about the aspect of mindfulness meditation itself. And this is easier said than done because sometimes when I'm in that 10 or 15 minute meditation session, visual images are flashing into my head. But what I've done is learn how to sort of let them present themselves, but then go back to the feeling. You wanna occupy your attention on the feeling of the current moment rather than getting distracted by visual imagery that pops up in your head during the meditation session. So let those discussion points sink in and try Muse Meditation and play around with it and see how it actually affects your sessions and how you feel after the sessions because that's the most important part. We want the Muse headband to teach us mindfulness presence rather than just trying to hack the algorithm. And I think that if you stick with it, it will continue to improve your focus, your motivation, and overall brain health. And if you want some more advanced biohacking methods to cover all those problem areas. If you're a person that's really feeling burnt out, stressed, not getting good sleep, and just not motivated, and in order to address those problems, I've recently come out with my Primal Edge program where I'm doing multiple live calls with those of you who do sign up and addressing all those issues and more. I hope you enjoy this Muse visualization calibration technique. And if you wanna learn more about my program, you can find information at www.primaledgechallenge.com. Also, Muse just announced their really cool new headband, the Muse S Athena. If you wanna learn more about that one, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.